дух Welcome to today's video. This is not a tree stand making putting up tutorial because I would have epically failed at that. This is going to be a more technical video and showing you guys how I film my hunts. So we're gonna dive right in. I'm gonna set up exactly how I would set up if I was if this was the real deal. I was 20 foot up in the air, I'm only a foot off the ground, but exactly how I would set up. I'm going to talk you guys through it. I also have some of my older gear and kind of how I progressed as I kept filming year after year and the kind of different equipment that I've gotten. So the foundation of filming your hunts and most especially solo filming, self-filming, you're the only person in the tree, your own hunts, is your camera arm setups and this was actually my second camera arm that I purchased. The very first one I purchased was the Gorilla Tree Arm, I believe. It was like $40. I got it at Cabela's, and that's like when I was fresh filming. Then I upgraded to this, the Muddy Outdoor or Outfitter camera arm, which is a very nice camera, um, especially for like a middle grade DSLR or just a little uh, Sony Handycam. It does a superb job. But since I upgraded equipment, I have much heavier gear now. I want it to be 100% rock steady, very, you know, more professional, I guess you could say. I upgraded to the Muddy Hunter arm, which this thing is a, is a tank. I mean, this is wrapped in electrical tape to try to make it a little quieter. Um, but this thing's pretty dang heavy. I mean, I can look at the stats exactly and put them up on the screen, but this thing alone is like five pounds, six pounds, and this thing's at least two. So with this strapped on the tree, your camera really isn't moving anywhere and, and you can get some very professional stuff with this. So that's the first thing I always do when I sit down in my tree stand is I set up my camera arm. So I always see people do different things if, if they like it on the right side, if they like it on their left side. I actually like it on my right side most of the time in most situations because with that big camera arm, I can get it out all the way in front of me and most of my shots are gonna be off of my left shoulder. And I actually set up everything so that I remain seated the whole time, even while I shoot and film. I try to set it up that way and then if I have to stand up and turn around, like if a deer is back behind me on my right shoulder or just off my right shoulder, I can still get to it pretty easily. So on Muddy's Hunter Arm, they actually have a uh, piece of string here to help you put it on. You can actually screw in a backpack hook, hook it on, and then wrap it around, but I never do that. What I always do is I lean against it like this, and then it comes with a ratchet strap. And also, it's super important that you do this quiet, obviously, because you're deer hunting. I always pinch these when I move it so nothing clicks. So I always get it pretty snug just right in front of me and then I'll adjust it into place. So I'll click it just a few times, rotate it over, and then even though it's really annoying, I always keep this super exposed, like right on my back so that I can get to it easily in the dark and I'm not making a whole bunch of noise. So like I was saying about being super quiet, it's just a regular ratchet strap. So if you finesse with it and kind of be really quiet with it, it can be dead silent. Pull that as you ratchet, pull that, go back, pull that, go back. It takes a while, but you can pretty much be dead silent with it early in the morning on like, you know, November 4th when it's 30 degrees out. Okay, so now that our arm is on the tree, like I said, this thing's a tank. It's like not going anywhere. So next is the tree arm. Um, super simple to install this. You simply scooch it in. Again, you can be super quiet with it. And then ignore this. I actually dropped this mount out of my tree stand and broke off that little knob. So 
that shouldn't be broken. So there's a bubble level on top of this and all you have to do is loosen both of these, adjust it to make sure that obviously it's perfectly level. And then you do your up and down elevation with this thing. So not all trees are straight actually, if you didn't know that. So you just adjust this, it's super simple, and uh, just get that bubble lined up right in the middle. So now, so now you have a perfectly leveled tree arm ready to rock. Quick camera change, I'm now running on my second angle camera so that I can show you guys my primary camera setup, my monitor, what lens I'm using, and how I deal with battery life. So this is my main camera angle so this angle will get the deer any b-roll and pretty much pretty much everything but in the moment of the shot i'll have a second angle which is this that i'm holding it's the sony alpha 6500 and it's a freaking workhorse i love this thing so much and for the price it runs about i want to say like 1300 bucks 1200 bucks just the body and then you can get lenses anywhere from you know you can get a cheap kit lens for two hundred dollars or you could get way up in the thousands of dollars but this in particular one that i absolutely love because of the range that it has it's an 18 to 105 g series sony lens and it's an like electronic lens i think they call it so you have this side toggle right here that actually gives you the ability to act more of like a like a camcorder rather than a DSLR but you do have the option to do it manually right here which I actually do it manually more than this but this is always good in case I need to grab the camera quick with one hand and get it on something quick and zoom in or out. So solo filming with the 6500 there's a couple downfalls with just the camera. The LCD screen is great but it's kind of small and for you to kind of get in there and make sure everything's in focus it, it's kind of rough so I went ahead and got a fuel world monitor that I put on top of it and for tree stand usage this thing's absolutely awesome except for the battery life it's okay I got these jumbo jumbo batteries um, pretty much the biggest ones I could find on Amazon and they'll run probably six hours on and off usage and I have two of them always fully charged um, so it's not too terrible but it is kind of a nuisance for my battery I actually run an external battery that I have hooked up to a shoe mount in the center and then I kind of have rigged up with the zip tie up on top and then a cord running down and then plugging in because the Sony cameras Sony's so smart and it's just like a regular Android charger so when I'm sitting in the stand I can just turn that thing on and it'll charge it so I always always have that thing running and if I'm expecting to do like an all-day sitter out west I'll actually tape another one on and I have no battery issues whatsoever I'll keep a couple extra spare uh, just regular Sony batteries in my backpack in case I have like an emergency situation and also chassis around the 6500 is a cheap $30 cage that I got off of Amazon. Um, it's just so I can have all these shoe mounts on it and so I can drop it out of a tree stand like I did last year and it was perfectly fine. For the gel head, this is just like a $70 or $100 gel head I got off of Amazon. It does a pretty good job. I might upgrade this season. Um, it has pretty sensitive, uh, yeah, you can see right there pretty sensitive deals right here so you really have to fine tune it um, which I'm not a huge fan of but once it's set up it's pretty decent it gets super smooth footage so totally rigged up with the muddy hunter arm and my 6500 this thing is super super heavy um, but it's still really sturdy switching back over to my Sony 6500 this is actually exactly how I'd film interview I have this arm extended all the way out captured on this camera right here so arms all the way extended out just like that and it's right in front of me and this gives just a perfect interview type thing so a couple other reasons why I love the 6500 and really 6500 the Sony a7s2 um, they came out with a new Sony I think a couple months ago it's just the 7 I believe is 
It's a mirrorless camera, so I mean, I'm sorry if I'm getting super technical, but I know people have been asking me this, and I'm just gonna make this video a little bit more technical. Sorry if you don't like it. I'll probably skip to the end. I'll do some cool hunting B-roll stuff. But I love the Sony series because of the low light capabilities. You can really crank that ISO, and it's a good comparison to your actual eyesight. So sitting in the stand is just dusk, like you can see. You know, you can see fine, you can shoot fine, but for example, like this camera is not very good at low light whatsoever. You get in those last 15 minutes of light and you're pretty much done with this. But with the Sony, you're still rocking just like you see with your plain eyes for the most part. So that's one reason why I love that camera. Another reason why Sony is so good is 4K. So it'll shoot in 4K, which is as crisp as crisp can be, especially with a pretty decent lens like the one I have rocking on there right now. It's just really good. Third reason is slow motion. So 6500 actually shoots in 120 frames per second. And with the right lighting conditions and everything, you can actually see the broadhead spinning in air. I shot a doe opening morning in Michigan and on a big monitor and slowing it way down, you can see silver flicking and just my broadhead spinning right into the deer. That was shot with this exact setup. Okay, so now let's talk about how I like to set up my second camera angle. So I always try to keep things super simplistic, especially when you're solo filming. You don't wanna overcomplicate things. You wanna have a system in place that you're super familiar with, um, minimal on noise, and is super effective, and 100% is gonna get the shot. So with that being said, my second camera arm is super simple as well. It's just a actual bow hook with the muddy um, camera arm all messed up hold on with the muddy camera arm adapter that actually just screws on the end of that so what i always love to do is to make things as real as possible i don't like fake stuff at all all the footage you see is exactly how it happens and exactly when it happened so i'm going to use the example from hunting in iowa and we we're hunting on a hang on stands and i needed to get a bow hook and my second camera arm so what this provided was both, and it worked absolutely flawless. So for my second camera angle, if it's pretty much a straight pole tree, nothing, no branches coming off or anything, I always like to put it pretty much right level with the top of my head off of my left shoulder. So next what I'll do is I'll take this camera and stick it on that. Okay, so now you kind of have a two for one special, and I have my B-Real Carbon Arcs one right here and I can just hook it right on right there and it's a pretty good setup I really enjoyed it in Iowa um, here in Michigan we have a little bit different setup um, with our tree stands and bow hooks and stuff but this is a pretty bulletproof setup so some more technical things with the Sony lineup there's two video settings that you can have preset there's one and two on that little dial wheel now what I like to do is I like to set one up in 4k and one up in slow motion. So what I will actually do throughout the hunt is I'll be switching back and forth between slow motion and 4K. 4K, B-roll, B-roll, B-roll. Maybe I wanna get some slow motion shots of something, I'll switch over to slow motion. If it's light enough outside still and the kill shot's gonna happen close, I'll switch over to slow motion and get ready for the shot. There were several times throughout the season that I actually switched it over to slow motion right when I saw the deer that I was gonna kill or someone else was gonna kill and captured in slow motion. And it was literally a split second decision. And I'm super happy that worked out because my doe I got in slow motion opening day, that was a split second decision. The buck that Travis shot right next to the truck um, in Nebraska, that was real quick. I just switched it over. Um, my Michigan buck slow motion, same thing, switch that right over. So it's really simple to have it in um, both of those presets for the Sony lineup and both super useful. In the 4K setting, I do have a digital extended zoom, so I get a little bit more length out of this lens. So once I reach that 105 mark, then I can do a digital zoom of 1080p out to, I forget what it's out to, but it can reach pretty far out there and that's how I can get a lot of shots super up close. One thing that I wanna to touch on before we get out of here is for everyone 
who wants to start filming their hunts. It's very challenging. Solo filming your hunts is very challenging. Imagine trying to shoot the deer twice. It's essentially what you're doing. You're trying to shoot it with your bow or the gun. You're also trying to shoot it with the camera. And trying to do that at a very high level of quality is, is very hard. I put a lot of effort into making sure everything's good, logistically, batteries, um, camera arm, setup, you know. When, when the moment of truth happens, you wanna make sure that nothing is gonna get in your way. No sound, clicking release on, you know, anything. One, one simple click of your metal release on this thing, one of big bucks at 15 yards and you're done. But gear wise, for all the beginners, I shot most of my beginner stuff with this simple Sony Handycam. I think you can get these for like 300 bucks, 400 bucks from Walmart. Shoots 1080p, the zoom is great. I filmed some of my very first hunts with this. Then I upgraded to what my second camera angle right now is the Canon Rebel T3i. And I actually shot the very first season, season one of the B season, all with that. Um, with just the standard kit lens, like the 18 to 55. And then I picked up this 75 to 300 lens. And I had one camera along with this, sometimes as my second angle, to capture everything. And that Rebel T3i, I picked up for like $300. And then I had my outfitter arm that I picked up, I think for a hundred bucks. So you can start so simply and get some really awesome content. I know that it's very intimidating, especially with social media now. You see all these people with these giant cameras and the production quality, and all of this stuff is just so overwhelming, but you have to remember that they all started you know, somewhere. All of them didn't have super expensive equipment and all that, and you know, for everyone who's trying to film their hunt that's like 15, 16 years old, I would definitely recommend even borrowing your family video camera. Like, that's awesome. Let's make it happen. Go do it. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. This has been something I've been wanting to do for a long time now. Um, and I think I can dive deeper into this even more. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff I missed out. So if you like my content, make sure to, to subscribe, like this video, share this video, comment on this video. Comment below if you have any questions for me. I'm sure I'm gonna get a ton of technical questions because I left a lot of stuff out. Um, but thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.